It's back to school for the Diamondback Terrapins. The Head Start program is in full swing out here in Sandy Neck. With me today, Natural Resource Officer Sean Cordes. Sean, we've hey. got some babies. We do, yeah. Yep, so uh, this is always one of my favorite times of the year. Um, it's in that stage of the program where a lot of these nests that were laid in June and July are finally starting to hatch out. So we're starting to see the small diamondback terrapin hatchlings in the wild make their way out to the marsh. And then we're also getting our first hatchlings for the Head Start program that we do here in the town of Barnstable. So we're out monitoring some of those nests today um, and getting them ready for the school year. Right, so let's talk a little bit about this Head Start program and why mm -hmm. it's necessary for yep. these um, little turtles to really mm -hmm. survive in the wild now. Yeah, so that the Diamondback Terrapin is a protected species in here in Massachusetts. It's listed as threatened. A um, couple of reasons for that. Historically, the Diamondback Terrapin was actually um, hunted for food for a period of time. Uh, turtle soup was a delicacy back in the 19th century, early 20th century, um, and then habitat loss certainly had an impact on their populations as well. Um, salt marshes, like a lot of wetlands, have been destroyed and filled in over the years. So we have these few uh, remaining populations here on Cape Cod, uh, the one in the town of Barnstable being out here in the Barnstable Great Marsh, uh, and they nest right here at Sandy Neck Beach. So. Because their populations are historically lower than they likely have been, um, it's that much harder for their, you know, f for them to be able to continue this process year after year. Um, terrapins generally survive by laying a lot of eggs, and a small fraction of those eggs will naturally uh, make it to adulthood. But the percentage is only about one in every 100 eggs. Um, We've faced a lot of issues here with predation on both nests and hatchlings. So this Head Start program is a, a good way to be able to combat some of that and get some of these turtles um, sort of bigger and stronger than they would be in the wild uh, before we release them back out, which should you know, bring that chance of survival up quite a bit. Right, so they don't follow rules of the road or anything, so a lot of these are like literally in the middle of the trail where they'll lay their eggs. What what happens when that is like, you know, y y vehicles are passing through this all the time. Yeah, exactly. So the, um, the trails that these diamondback terrapins cross when they go from the marsh into the sand dunes where they nest um, is also made out of sand. So generally it's a hiking trail for most. There's only a few vehicles that can access these trails um, because there are you know, small camps and cottages out here. Um, but to a terrapin, that trail is no different than the sand dunes beyond it. And so it looks like a good nesting spot for them. So these nests that are laid in the trail would otherwise be run over if we weren't out monitoring them. Um, what we're able to do is actually find those nests and carefully extract them and relocate them to a new safer site. And we monitor those out you know, throughout the season until this time of year when they hatch out. And those are the turtles that we use for this Head Start program. And um, they will be you know, raised by schools and some other organizations throughout the season uh, you know, so that we can release them out next season. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the Head Start program mm -hmm. itself. Uh, so these turtles don't remain with you at the gatehouse. They go to schools and senior centers. And so tell us how that works. Yeah. So um, once these these nests have started hatching out, which we're seeing uh, this week, we've had our first hatchlings sort of make it to that stage. Um, we take care of them here at Sandy Neck until they get to the point where their yolk sac dries up. That's on the plastron or that sort of underside of their shell. Uh, and that actually provides them with enough energy and nutrients to in the wild be able to make it out to the marsh or to make it to a nice spot in the sand dunes to be able to burrow down um, and sort of go into a type of hibernation or, you know, throughout the winter. So these particular turtles for our Head Start program aren't doing that. They're not going out to the marsh this winter, but we still have to wait for those yolk sacs to dry up before they can start eating on their own. So once that happens, they get transferred over to our main headquarters at MEA, and they're in small tanks there uh, until the point where they're able to feed on their own. And from that point, we're able to distribute them out to schools, to libraries, all of these great programs that are um, you know, part of the overall Head Start program. And they stay in those tanks throughout the winter time. And instead of in the wilds, you know, they'd be hibernating, not doing much, not growing. Um, 
they're in these tanks in warm water, they're eating lots of food every day and they're growing big and strong. And generally throughout that six to eight months, they're gonna grow to be about the size of a three-year-old turtle. Um, so their shell's nice and strong and solid and they're released right back out into the marsh. So a lot of those predators that would normally go after them when they're you know, just a tiny little hatchling um, aren't gonna have that opportunity. So um, it's, it's been a really good system. We've seen it, you know, it's been pretty, pretty successful thus far. So um, right. we're excited for another year of it. So tell me a little bit about what kids are learning. When, when you put a turtle in a classroom or even libraries or mm -hmm. a senior center, what do people learn from this uh, opportunity? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a great program. They learn everything from just the, the anatomy of that animal, of a, of a little turtle, to the um, ecology of the whole system here at Sandy Neck. Um, so they're learning all about the resources here and the Great Marsh and the Barrier Beach. And they're also learning about um, what we can do to protect species in the world and here in our own backyard. So they are working with an endangered species um, and understanding that it's a fun process to be able to be a part of this program and watch them grow, but it's also really important for conservation efforts. Um, you know, they are having a direct impact on restoring a population right here on Cape Cod. So this is one of those nests that's part of our Head Start program. As you can see, that's a, a bucketed nest, one that we relocated right from the marsh trail just off to our um, left-hand side here. And what I'll be doing now is pulling this cap off the top and checking to see where we're at with the hatching process. So we have a couple of hatchlings right here on the top which is a good sign. So we'll be pulling this nest and bringing it back to the garage here at Sandy Neck to evaluate the rest of the hatching. But both of these individuals look nice and healthy. Um, they're a good size. And if you look at the bottom, they still have a little bit of that yolk sac, but it is starting to dry up um, pretty nicely. So we'll probably have them for a couple of days before they go back to the office and uh, start swimming around and hopefully feeding pretty soon here as well. So we can check real quick and just see where we're at with the rest of these eggs in here. So we have a few more in here as well. And it's interesting, you always have to be very careful at this point. Um, you know, not only are the eggs delicate, but you'd be surprised at how soft the shells are on these right. hatchlings when they first come out. Um, even though they look, you know, sort of just like a miniature version of some of the adults, uh, you know, they're still quite fragile at this point in time which is why at this size you know predators can be such an issue there's um you know thing everything from birds to raccoons and um, fox can sort of eat them whole <laughs> we'll take the whole nest back with us oh because now there's ha they're hatching out so they're they've yeah. started the process so we'll put them on a heat lamp um, as the rest of them continue oh, to incubate. One. But yeah, we gotta, it looks like most of them have already hatched. Sometimes it takes a while for them to either emerge out. Um, and oftentimes too, you know, one of the other things that they can do in the wild is when they hatch out, they actually stay right there in the, the nest bowl and just wait until the spring to emerge and go out really? to the marsh. Mm -hmm. Wow. And again, that's uh, you know an adaptation to help combat the fact that there's so many predators. So if, if every single nest hatched out and went straight for the marsh, there are chances of, uh, you know, even just a couple predators taking most of them out as high. So. My goodness. Is there two of them? Are yep, they alive? Yep, there's at least two. Yep, they're alive. So I'll, uh, I think they're, uh, they're enjoying it. Oh my it God. But, yep, they are ready to go. There's another one down below that. Wow. See, there's you know an egg in here too that's still unhatched. A couple of them. Oh my goodness! Look at that! Oh my gosh! That's so cool. Yeah, I'll see if I can show you guys that real quick. Yeah, there's one in here that's ready to hatch. Is it like cracked? Is yep. that... Yeah, so the turtle's in there. It's, it's you know, started to crack out of its shell. And um, you know, pretty soon it should be probably on its way out. So it's 
hard, it might be hard to see on the cameras, but I can show you on these animals. On the very tip of their nose when they're first born, you can see that little point. Yeah. That sharp point, so that's an egg tooth. A lot of reptiles have this, a lot of birds have this, and that's there um, to help them actually crack through that shell of their egg to start out with and, and emerge. So you, you also see that out here on, you know, like the piping plovers and the yeah. least terns, they'll have those. And it'll go away after a, a period of time. So these same turtles, if they're the ones that, um, for example, stayed underground in the dunes over winter and they came out, that would be gone by the springtime. Um, so you can tell that, you know, they were, they had hatched out in the fall yeah. and were just emerging. Oh, so. okay. So cool. Uh, yeah. One of the, th the things we have to be careful with um, when we do catch them at this point yep. is uh, there's potential that they could, if they don't uh, hatch out of the egg fast enough, they can actually dry to that egg and get stuck and it can pull the yolk um, sac oh, out. Oh, off, yeah. Um, which does happen in the wild, but yep. yeah, we definitely are um, mindful of that and careful to make sure that they get ample opportunity to not do that.